Hi, and welcome to episode nine of The Next Delicious Thing. I'm Jennifer Earl, and I am a food guide and someone who eats a lot of food, basically. I um, Thanks for joining me again. And this week, if you're listening on audio, it is also a video recording. Very exciting. This is a special episode this week because I decided to test London's best hot cross buns with my friend Ed, Ed Kimber, who you might know as the boy who bakes. This is unfortunately going to be released too late for you to get most of the hot cross buns, except one of our favorites, uh, Popham's, which is on until the end of the month. So um, this is being released just after Easter. So I hope you all had a lovely break and had some delicious chocolate. I had the most amazing egg that I bought from Gabriella Cugno. I will link to that at thenextdeliciousthing.com so you can see it in all its glory if you haven't already seen it on my social media channels. Although this is too late for you to enjoy the hot cross buns, I hope you'll enjoy some of the history that we share about hot cross buns. And then at the end, I ask Ed for some tips about how he makes hot cross buns. Next week, we'll be back to normal, talking about what I've eaten and some random historical facts. So I hope you enjoy this episode. It's slightly longer. Let me know what you think. And please like and subscribe. So uh, welcome, everybody, to episode nine of The Next Delicious Thing. I am joined by Ed Kimber, which is very Hello. exciting. Our first video podcast. <laughs> Today, Ed and I are going to be tasting hot cross buns which is probably too late for any of you to actually get to eat them, but we'll we be well prepared. <laughs> we get to eat them. Yeah. We'll be well prepared for next year. I'm sure you know it already, but if not, he is a food writer and stylist and baker mm-hmm. and the author of five and soon to be six yes. cookbooks. Yes. I'm sure you've got at least one on your shelf. Um, Wanted Bakes was <laughs> the runaway success yes. of the pandemic. And the one runaway success of the <laughs> pandemic. Yeah, it was one good thing to come out. It was an awesome book, yeah. which got people baking at home. Um, I think people were baking already, but it yeah, was yeah. really easy. Banana to... bread and sourdough, yeah. Yeah. Did you have a banana bread in one tin bakes? Uh good question. There is a banana upside down cake in the first one with uh, buckwheat and it's like a caramel upside down mm-hmm. cake. It's really nice. That um good. and then I think did I do one in lockdown I probably did the rest before it in lockdown but I was definitely on the sourdough train you were lockdown. your videos I used your method Thanks. to make a starter yeah I had nothing to and, do during early lockdown and oh, I had plenty to do but I still managed to uh, I had a child remember yeah um, you had other priorities yeah, yeah but I still managed to make sourdough and the bread was perfect the videos if you're interested if you haven't already made sourdough yeah. and somehow decide now would be the time yeah. then check out Ed's videos online they're yeah. amazing I'll include a link on the web page for this at the next delicious thing.com so uh, this is a selection of hot cross buns, mm-hmm. which are based on the answers that Ed got for his stories and from his stories, from his Instagram stories when he yeah. asked his community. And then we couldn't get one of them, but uh, we, I just got some extras yes. as well. So then we have seven hot cross buns. Seems like a good cross section of like the London bakery scene. Some more traditional, some more inventive. Um, yeah. Cross section. Cross section like style. What and, like yeah. what you did there. <laughs> you also cut them in half, so they are a cross section. <laughs> yes, in every way. Uh, so I don't don't know if you know, but the crosses. So people think that the cross is connected to the fact that uh, Jesus was mm-hmm. supposedly. Maybe I shouldn't say supposedly, but <laughs> my dad won't be very happy about that. Uh, but was uh, crucified yeah. on the cross, uh, and that is why they're served at Easter, mm-hmm. and that's the theory. However, not yeah, true. you're shaking your head. Yeah, you know it's not true. Well, it's funny just because a lot of Christian imagery is co-opted from paganism or from other religious things at the time to kind of make Christianity fit into existing lives. Yes. And yeah, this is another example of it. But this, so this, it's interesting because it became so associated with Catholicism mm-hmm. that Queen Elizabeth, yeah, yeah, yeah. the first one, <laughs> not, not our current one, uh, she banned... Mm-hmm the sale of hot cross buns or buns with any kind of bread or bun with a cross on it except at funerals good friday (laughs) and for christmas as well because they were considered yeah popery which is meaning to 
Catholics. Catholic, so the yeah. Protestants were rising and the Puritan movement meant that we didn't want any Catholic symbolism in England. That's probably why they're still century. mainly only sold at Easter. Because if you think of like a lot sense. of other things, mm. they get sold for a much longer period every year. These, yes. you know, but hot cross buns, I mean, obviously the period has extended beyond just that week, but it's still a very seasonal thing. You know, flavors of things appear for them every year. But the actual product is on shelves for a defined period, yeah, which is very, quite nice, I think. A very short period. Yeah. It's nice until you're craving one. Yes. In I just make some, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine if you're a baker. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just come to your house. <laughs> I'll be like, Ed, I'd like some cross buns, yeah. please. And the interesting thing, yeah, so what you're saying about why, because Queen Elizabeth banned it, except around Christmas, mm. Easter and funerals, it makes sense that that's why we only see crosses on Mm-hmm. baked good now but it used to be that bakers would almost always put a cross on their bread or their bums because that was warding off the evil spirits <laughs> apparently and so people buying bread would look out for the cross in order to like know that their bread was safe and less likely to go stale and interesting moldy. i wonder if that's why certain classic british breads like a cob loaf or that kind of thing yeah, actually not sure bread. if a cob has for but a lot of them would have mm. the scoring would be across yeah and that could also be i guess a similar reason especially if it comes from such a historical place that you could easily have lost that information to history but yeah it, it could easily be it, it makes sense it's also kind of practical as well because then mm-hmm. you can break it more easily if yeah, it's, yeah if it's something like a soda bread mm-hmm. you can then tear it and share it um <laughs> the original tear and share bread um and so the first hot crust bun was supposedly, or it harks back to what was known as an Alban bun based mm-hmm. on the St. Alban Abbey. Yep. Uh, so um, a monk. So a monk called Brother Thomas Rodcliffe mm-hmm. in 1361 gave out sweet yeasted buns. So they had eggs in them as well mm-hmm. uh, with currants and they also had grains of paradise and cardamom interestingly not spices I'm fine with that yeah that you would necessarily see now but he gave them up to the poor and supposedly they were marked the cross which sounds like it was done quite frequently this mm-hmm. some of these stories say that it went back thousands of years yeah but what's interesting is that the uh the um my theory when I first read that was like well that makes sense he's kind of branding them isn't he he's like this came from the church yeah. so there's your cross on the top of the bun so when I give it to the poor you know who's looking after yeah. you it is, it is the, the brothers in the Abbey who have fed you on Good Friday. Um, cool. Should we eat some? Yes, let's try some. Okay, so should we talk, let's talk about who... Let's talk about what we've got, yeah. Yes. So we've got bread ahead, which yes. will be more classic. Floor, which I'm expecting to be classic-ish, but with different grains and flavourings probably. Yeah, they're quite specific about their flour, aren't they? Yes. Then there is um, Gales, which I'm expecting to be across the road classic because they're serving a very broad spectrum of people. And um, yeah. Poppums, which is made with uh, croissant dough scraps. So I'm intrigued by the flavour of that. And then we have this one, which is from, uh, where's that one from? Uh, that is from Quality Chop House, yes. which was one of the ones recommended. That got from... recommended, yeah. It's and then really, um, I'm just going to lift very up and show it yeah, to yeah. the screen. This one, oh, this has a lot of dried fruit in it. Yeah, there's two particular that are very loaded with fruit. Quality Chop House and then Bread Ahead yes. are the most absolutely jam-packed. Some of the others are a little bit sparse, yes. maybe. Um, Frozen constant. Yeah, and then there is this one, peel, which is this from one. Toclas. Yes. And that has a very strong candied peel very citrusy smell when you give it a little whiff mm-hmm. and then the most unusual is from Layla which is not traditional in any way it's chocolate and candied peel I think in there um maybe some ginger uh, but it's very chocolatey smelling it actually yes. really smells like yeah Christmas this is to me. cocoa in the dough as well yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I ate that one yesterday actually not this one not the one we're gonna try no. yeah um, but I, I got an extra one <laughs> I got an extra one so um I, I ate that one already and really enjoyed it so uh, yeah, I wasn't sure about putting chocolate in a in our cross bun. Obviously, I, I mean, think I've done it. Everything is great, but yeah, I think I've done it before. But I, from memory, I, it's been a long time. I don't often like breads flavored with cocoa. Yes, because the flavor is never quite strong enough, and it does have like a slightly raw cocoa powder taste. Yeah, so I'm intrigued to see what it's like. 
um, but we should butter our last. Yeah, we we're going to butter it on the screen, and then I just realised it's probably not ideal to be able to we, butter it. But we could. I'll do. hold it like this. And um, so this is the. Can, is that useful if I hold it like that? Yeah, I was going to put it right by that mic so you could hear. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Bit of ASMR for you. Yes, and then. Ta-da, for anyone watching online. Uh, so that was the talkless yep. one. I'm just going to quickly do a little um, show and tell to the camera. So that was talkless. This is quality chop house, nice and brown. The um, the the cross is always um, flour and water, right? I haven't made them. Flour and water or milk. Some people put a little bit of fat in there. This is the cocoa. Um, yeah, but generally it's always uh, flour. In the UK. Um, this is the croissant topping mm. one with made with croissant scraps from Poppins. Uh, this is the Gales, uh, which was hot when I picked it up, which was exciting. And uh, this is the um, this is the floor one. And uh, that's F L O R. And then the final one to just show you again in reverse order to what we talked about them before is bread ahead. Uh, so yeah, I thought it was interesting the prices as well. So they ranged from Bread Ahead's was one fifty mm -hmm. to Popham's was three fifty, and it does have like a laminated cross on it. So yeah. it's interesting because I think because so many people associate hot cross buns with supermarket packs, six for a pound kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I think it's probably very hard to price them at a point where they actually, especially like Bread Aheads is packed full of yeah. fruit and it's surprising that that is the cheapest. Yeah. Considering some yeah. other ones have much lower percentages of fruit. Um, but, you know, dried fruit, candy peel, like these things, if you're buying good quality, are not cheap. No. So, um, I yeah. Couldn't, I couldn't believe um, the Brunswick East Bakehouse mm. uh, stolen at Christmas was five pounds and it was full of amazing almonds and dried very fruit. cheap. Yeah, I think they didn't price it correctly. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure I want to tell them that because I'm hoping to get it again <laughs> this Christmas. It was stunning. Um, the one from Toklas was 20 pounds yeah. and a similar size. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting because you say like big, good quality um, fruits. Are, like, and oh, Toklas sure. probably have a focus on that as well. Because they're all about, you know, importing like amazing citrus and, you know, good quality ingredients. So it wouldn't surprise me if they're using like the yes. Ferrari of dried fruit. Oh my goodness, they are. I'm pretty sure they're getting it from Daniele. I forget his name of his company, but yeah. Saudo Sophia uses his stuff as well. So, and that would have been a really great. I would have. I yeah, I did. Think she, I just get... saw uh, Sophia posting about them today. Ah, but... Damn. Sorry, um, Sophia. We'll um, <laughs> next time. Yeah, next we'll do a review of Babka or something and make sure you're included in that. So um, interestingly, in the UK and I think probably most Commonwealth countries, the cross is done with the flour paste. Yeah. But and I don't know if this is because they're non-traditional in this country, but in the US, I see people making it with everything but a traditional cross. Really? People make them with. I've seen there's a food blogger who makes them with pastry cream. So you perhaps a pastry mm. cream cross on. Um, quite delicious, but actually. the one I see quite commonly in the US is like a royal icing, like an icing uh, sugar oh, no. water. No. And I just, yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I quite like the chew of yes. the flower paste one. I know it's a, a bit of a strange chew, but I quite like it. Yeah, no, I, I do, wouldn't so. want that intense hit of sweetness no. from icing sugar. But, um, no, I definitely wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, that's there's enough in, from the dried fruit. Totally. There's actually one in like Australia it. that paints it on with like a... Um, I think it's like an icing sugar paste and they kind of like paint across and it looks really pretty um but I don't know how much extra sweetness I'll find them I think it might be somewhere like Flower and Stone or somewhere in um Melbourne I think but... you know I grew up in Australia yes and it was very common to have iced buns at school so that was mm. a very similar dough yeah, to yeah, this yeah, yeah. and then with an icing yeah yeah a sugar white sugar icing on yeah. top so I quite like those too. Yeah, they're nice. Finger as well. bun. We have those as well. A lot. Yeah, finger buns. Yeah. They are here, aren't they? There's, I feel like it's, maybe it's the same thing. Um, there's a lot of crossover between totally. British and yeah. Australian things. Um, it's no lamingtons. Um, <laughs> no cherry rides. Okay, so uh, what should we start with? I think we should start with something traditional. So maybe bread ahead because it yeah. is bread ahead. Let's do bread ahead then, Gales. Yeah, they're a great bakery and they don't they are quite classic i think in a lot of things like this because they are you know one of their main locations is in um borough market so i think they probably get a lot of tourists so yes. they kind of tend to stick to classic 
for classics like this. So we have toasted half of them, by the way. So we might try them both toasted and untoasted Mm -hmm. because it does change flavor. Mm. Toasted and buttered. Mm -hmm. Mm. So not too spiced, Mm. quite low on the spices, but very jam packed full of fruit, which I like. Chewier than I was expecting. Mm, that's right. I kind of, um, I kind of expect. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the baking that I've experienced, or because most of the hot cross buns I've bought have been from. I don't know. I just I I, I associate that chewiness with with hot cross buns, but maybe I've been buying the wrong one. No, I do think there should be some chew, and they are, they you know they can often be quite dense, so mm-hmm. that's not unusual. Um, I just somehow, from the look of it, I thought it was going to be, because you can kind of get those ones that are a bit softer. Um, but I, this has quite a classic flavour to me. Like It's very dry yeah. fruit heavy. Um, yeah, it's much more dried fruit than, spi- than spices. Yeah, you can also like tell from the dough, like the yeah, colour of it is not and... dark. Um, but yeah, if you're a dried fruit fan, mm. which I am, this is delicious. Um, I would make a nice kind of hearty breakfast, I think. It would, yeah, definitely. Mm. I'm, um, I'm less keen on the Citrus, I prefer currants to citrus, but that's Fair. a personal preference. See, I love um, candied peel kind of mm. citrus. It gives me holiday baking because, you know, you think of Christmas cake and all mm. those things. So I like citrus, but sometimes it can feel a little, it depends on the, bitter. yeah, it can be a bit bitter and a little bit and almost like orange extract flavor. Yes. I was gonna say, um, this is actually really good, I think. Yeah. Um, I think that's why I don't like it because if you, if you have really good quality peel, it's fantastic, but so often they taste a bit almost yeah. detergent-like. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so we're going to try scales. scales. I really am this is definitely a bit darker. into uh, toasted with butter. I also think they've got um, in this sour, uh, sour cherries or cranberries, probably cranberries. Yeah, I'd say cranberries. It's not based on a price. Point. <laughs> this was two pounds. Oh, I forgot to smell it first. Too late once it's in your mouth. So this is the one that I thought before we started. I thought this one smelled like cheese, mm. and yes. I'm getting a slight cheesy flavour. Mm. I'm not so that kind of lactic. Yeah, I'm not a massive. I think it might be made with cultured butter. Yeah, it's more like a like a soured milk, and not in a badly. <laughs> but it's also so not very spicy. The cranberries are. I don't know. Maybe it's just the bite that I took. The cranberries are quite dominant in this for me. Yeah, I'm not getting the kind of even though it looks very classic, I'm not getting classic flavour from it. Not getting really much spice and... It's a bit sweeter than the... Yeah, the dough is definitely it. softer. So if you like a soft dough, this is, mm. you know, a slightly more tender kind of texture. But I'm personally slightly missing the classic, like, dried fruit flavour of a hot cross bun. Mm, yeah, it's softer. It's very it's pleasant. Touching the top half. <laughs> it's just, yeah, not quite giving me the same... Yeah, it really smells very cheesy. I'd be so curious. As mm. I said, it was hot when I got it and freshly baked out of the oven, so there's nothing like stale about it. But really cheesy smelling. I wonder if, I mean, some, I feel like I've heard of people folding in just a tiny bit of cheese into a sweet bun, but maybe I'm making that up. Maybe it's I would just, be shocked if Gales would do that only yeah. because. Especially you not know, without telling you. Gales, yeah, yeah. But they're also slightly more high streets, which is not criticism. They just, you know, they're serving a lot more people. They mm-hmm. can't be necessarily as risk-taking because they have to sell a lot yeah. more of them so they're selling yeah. to a wider audience but I think I would be a touch disappointed with that one only mm. because it's not giving me the flavor I want it to I think the texture is lovely but um yeah, yeah it's really it's nice and soft. it's just either. it's too sweet for me for what I want from a hot cross bun the it's too, too sweet, sweet but also not backing it up with the other flavors because I think sweetness is fine if you've got the spicing to balance it all out but it's a little bit yeah, yeah and that lactic that it's strange. Cheese, I'm not. Mm. I'm not vibing with that. <laughs> no. So next up is floor. Mm. Floors has got a much darker color. You can tell they probably use some sort of uh, whole wheat flour Ooh, or different grains. Also really soft. It feels really kind of um, crummy. Yeah, but it soft, but also kind of with heft. Yes. It doesn't feel like a you know demure hot cross bun. No, it does. It feels much more crumbly than the other two, which kind of sliced and didn't really. This look. Mm. Much more terrible. This is giving me. Well, this smells like the ones I used to make at school. Properly, like mixed spice. But also, 
It's giving me malt. I think there's malt in the dough because it's giving me that kind of like malt tea loaf kind of vibe. Mm. That's it. The ones in my school, yeah. I'm thinking the. It really <laughs> has. I think it also because it's got probably got whole wheat um, flour in it. Mm. It's backing up all those flavors. The spicing's still gentle, but it's there in this one. Oh, this is so good. Mm. Yeah, it's like beer in the beer in the bread. Mm. Yeah, there's probably some malt syrup in that one. This is um, much less chewy. It's much more soft yeah. and, and tear apart. The, this is the texture that I like. Much, this it's got, feels like, like you can taste like more eggy, I guess. Is that what? Yeah, I also think that you can tell it's got the... So the, the top of this is very dark. Not in a burnt way, it's just dark. Mm. And it's probably because it has got some sort of barley malt extract or, or malt multi, syrup, which is flour, maybe. Uh, definitely probably a malted flour. But mm. that one's very nice. Again, I would probably prefer a little bit more fruit. But I think it's a very nice hopper spun. Yeah, I could, I could definitely have more fruit, but I don't mind. I'm, um, I really enjoy the texture. You, this is, um, I think this is a sourdough. Yeah, as probably. Well, isn't it? So I'm getting, getting a bit of that, sourdough. Yeah. that tang sourdough tang, but not in a, not in a very no, no, no. San Francisco sourdough kind of way. Just a bit. Mm. No, that I'm, I'm gonna try it on the untoasted bit. I think it, for me, I prefer this one toasted. I mean, I always almost prefer them toasted. Yeah. I think hopper buns are just better toasted, but. Mm. Um, Oh, as a kid, I hated them toasted. Don't know why. I didn't like them that much at all as a kid. Really? Yeah. I love, I've always loved pepper buns. Mm. I'm just quite a big dry fruit fan. Mm. Oh, the spicing looks really good. I can spice. do with more spices. I quite mm. like a very, yeah, I quite Maybe like Maybe compared spice. to the other two then. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This one had the most spicing so far, but I still think it's quite mm. subtle. I can taste the egg wash on the top. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan of egg wash, but it's on all of them. So what are you gonna do? Um, I have also tried the tried the Pond Street one this year as well, but I didn't take notes. So. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so this is the one I was excited about. This is um, should we try that? Poppins. We're gonna do that next. Okay. So, what we can do? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. We can go. Yeah. So Poppins, I don't quite know if it's fully made with croissant scraps or there's some actual dough in there, um, but the outside makes it seem like it is probably a little bit more heavy on the. Show it, show it again. That's the untoasted. So this one and actually this is the toasted. This one smells much more like a classic. It's dry fruit. I can smell the spicing straight off. Mm -hmm. Um, smells buttery and eggy. Like it smells like eggy, like French toast, like cinnamon and and we have spread butter on it, so that's, that's going to make it smell buttery. So this is the softest. So far, it's almost mm. like not got a chew. Very, very tender. I think the flavour of that is really classic. This is what I think of. If I was to describe the flavour of hot crust bunny, it would be this. Yes, me too. This is the most spiced. Yeah, so most spiced. The fruit on this one is very plump, which I like. Really, yeah. I feel it feels like, like soaked, soaked first, yeah. yeah. I think this one's lovely. Oh, it's lovely, lovely. Most expensive, but you know. But yeah, I Worth like that a it. lot. Mm. Yeah, if you eat it in, they give you the butter. It's cultured butter. Yeah, this is yeah. I think this is great. Oh god, this oh. is my favorite so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will have the most butter in it as a dough as well. So mm. it's almost ridiculously tender. Mm. It's kind of like it doesn't have the chew of um, mm. bread in the same way. It's you know more along the brioche kind of mm. super super tender, but that is delicious. Yeah, big fan. Yeah, of that that's one. really good. I mean, it's yeah. Like I think I, I liked the first one because it had that chew that i'm i like i like the chew in that one for sure yeah um i wish it had more spicing but i'm yeah so this is feels texturally less like what i expect yeah less fun, classic yeah but flavor wise much more the plump, yeah, yeah. plump fruits really premium and the spicing is there's quite a nice bit of um well balanced all spice yes in it. it's got that yes, slight because it's, it's not just of it. it was more cinnamon in the yeah, um, yeah. floor i think that spicing is great one. yeah that was really good so next is quality chop house. house. Yeah. This one oh, was one of the ones that came. Nearly had to fight somebody for the last one. <laughs> I was, I, I got distracted. I ran into a friend and started talking, and then lost my place in the queue. And then someone's like, "Is that all you've got?" And I was like, "Can you please save me one?" <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, she didn't take them all, so it was fine. But I might have got into a scrap. <laughs> I wouldn't really. I'm the pacifist. <laughs> this one's quite citrusy. I think they're using a lot more, um, I don't think there's raisins in this, I think it's sultanas. So it's mm. less kind of that intense sweetness. Oh, you've got more raisins. But... Mm. I think there's a little bit of raisins in mine. 
Oh, it does become hard to um, mm. identify the spices once you've had a few. They kind of like... This one's a little bit more neutral. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's much spicing in this one, really. Got a great colour to it. I should turn that to them. There's the buttered and the top and the unbuttered. This is one of the ones we said had quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, this of one's fruit. packed. Do you know what this reminds me? It reminds me more of um, a fruit tea cake. Yes. Because I don't really get spicing from this. No, I couldn't tell if it was just like the because I had but, so much in the last one. Whether it was that, like I couldn't tell. Mm. There is spicing in it, mm. but it's it's on the subtle side. But this one, yeah, if you're a fan of like a really fruity mm. iced bun or um, tea cake. This is definitely the one because it has that classic kind of very fruity vibe mm. to it. When it's got traditional sugar syrup on top. Mm -hmm. I'd forgotten that was a thing because um, it's sticky. Mm. It's very it pleasant. Smells, yeah, nice and it smells nice and the dried fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heavy. It smells as spicy. Mm. Well, try the top untoasted. Yeah, this one's probably this the feels stickiest. very, um, very hot cross bun like to me. The eating this is my mm -hmm. favorite untoasted. I think this is the first one that I felt is better untoasted. Mm. Yeah, you get a much. I think somehow it's just better untoasted. Yeah, that's really bizarre. Yeah, that is. This one's really nice untoasted. Mm. Yeah, that's great untoasted. How interesting. I want mine toasted. Yeah. Because um, then I can apply the right amount of butter. Yeah, the butter is better when it's Which been is toasted. Lots. <laughs> um, but good if you're on if you are walking and you mm -hmm. need to eat it without before you get home. You're yes. Eating on the road. I didn't I didn't try the um top Oh no, no, neither day. Um untoasted. untoasted. Smells Just so like rich it. and spicy. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Also I sometimes think the tradition of toasting them come from the fact that often they're a little bit dry. Yeah. It can be a little bit stale. Yes. This one is no is not stale or dry. This one you could very happily eat toasted and I, get a really nice. This is very brioche though. Mm -hmm. Like it's very. I can really taste the egg. Oh, I like it. All the eggs and butter. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I think delicious. it's delicious. It's less like. Spicing wise, it's very hot cross bun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah, the dough is definitely slightly uh, richer than traditional, but I'm not mad at that. No. Hot cross buns, <laughs> hot cross buns. One of any, two of any hot cross buns. Uh, two more to go. Yes. Um, and sugar is getting to gem. Mm, as always. <laughs> so this one is from. Um, I haven't thought of that song in so long until I was doing some research. Oh, um, this is from Topless. Yes. So sorry. Topless, I'm expecting. Very citrusy, just because yeah. of their obsession with it citrus. It seems to just have currants in it. There's dried fruit in the bottom, I'm seeing. Oh, oh yeah, okay, there's a few. Yeah. Um, less than others. Doesn't smell very strongly spiced. Um, so. The texture is on point, and unsurprisingly to me, the dried fruit is Ooh, the lemon. Wow. very real. Mm. It tastes, it's got slight bitterness to it. It's got a very genuine, real citrus flavor. Mm. If that you lemon like is so strong. candied lemon or candied orange, this is a winner because it is very strong. If you're not a fan of um, citrus in a cross bun or candied peel, you won't like it because it's very, very strong, but it's delicious. Mm. They are the importers of mm -hmm. the fancy Sicilian lemons, I think it is. Oh, that's really delicious, but mm. different. <laughs> like I'd say that's more of like a lemon hot cross bun for me, at least. This one feels expensive <laughs> because I can tell that like the kind of peel is, is like, they're not buying kind of peel and mm. big bats, they're making it. It's really delicious. moist and buttery too. Mm -hmm. like, mm. That is delicious. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Mm. I'm a big citrus person, so. That. And try the Jen's admitting she hasn't eaten most of the others, but I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back. To I haven't I just had want... any lunch. <laughs> no, no, I um, I was planning. I, I saved a bit in case I needed to review them. Fair. That was my um, that was my logic. I'm definitely going to eat more. 
I think these smell really nice. They I kind of that, remind I me of lunch. I had, a, <laughs> I had a slice of stretchy from Tokwas. It was a very small lunch. So these remind me walking I did. A little bit panatoni esque, like a classic berry um citrusy panatoni mm. in, in smell, not in taste. Mm. A little bit texturally as well. Mm -hmm. I think these not are also airy or egg either. pretty classic texture-wise. They've mm. got slight density to them, slight heft to them, but they're tender. And mm. um, also, I'd imagine if you go into Tokolis as they're pulling this out of the oven, the smell would be incredible yeah, a bit more. because the citrus flavor, I think, would be just permeate the whole space. Mm. Yeah, I didn't notice when I was in there today, though. Um, yeah, I like lots of currants. Mm -hmm. These are, yeah, I'm really, really, really into these. Yeah. I think that's like a almost like a special occasion one because it does feel quite different in some ways because it's so citrusy but it's mm. delicious. Yeah, big 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 fan of that one. There's a reason this is called the next delicious thing. You can't <laughs> help yourself but say that word around the things that um, I tell you about basically. Mm. So now it's just chocolate time. Mm. There's a little bits of. Um, so I thought it was going to be a chocolate orange, but I'm kind of glad that it's not. Um, so although, as I was saying on the radio yesterday, it's. Um, very on trend. Oh, it's this smells so good. It smells like chocolate cake. I've seen before. This one reminds me of like for some reason it gives me very Christmassy vibes mm. because the chocolate, the spicing, um, I keep getting whiffs of ginger mm -hmm. from it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I like this. I mean, it's not very traditional, but. So this would be really nice to dunk in coffee. Mm. It would. So the, it does have candied orange peel in it and the raisins are soaked in Earl Grey. And then the spices are cardamom, ginger and cinnamon. Mm. I was hoping to find out what chocolate, but it doesn't. Press release does not tell me. The one thing else is I, I did buy all of these except this one. <laughs> I will say I think they're a touch dry. Mm. It was I yesterday's. Think... Sorry. Okay, fine. You can't judge that. <laughs> like, you may not. <laughs> yeah. mm. This is the only one that came I got yesterday. So I do think it's got a nice flavor. It's definitely untraditional. Mm -hmm. Um I like the spicing in this one. It's it's probably the most aggressive, but also the most untraditional spicing. Very, very heavy mm -hmm. on ginger. Mm. cardamom because normally it's much yeah. more of that kind of rich warming spicing like mixed spices the dominant flavor in it um, and I, most of these feel like they're using a blend yeah which is quite harmonious this one feels like i think that's why i get the christmas vibe from it is it tastes smells to me like candied ginger and chocolate yeah that makes sense um and Ooh. i think it is much more kind of like in your face spicing um, which I approve of. So. Um, oops, getting crumbs on my computer. <laughs> um, not the first time. This is uh, Brother Rodcliffe, though. He used cardamom, so maybe they were... Fair. They, maybe, I, don't I, mean, I like cocoa. cardamom in everything, so that's my boyfriend who can tell you I put cardamom in everything and way too many things. But. <laughs> mm. It's... Um, whenever you put cocoa in anything, it always um, soaks up the moisture, mm -hmm. doesn't it? So it is a. Um, the problem with this is much is, cakier. Um, yeah, it's, much, it's less bready and much cakier. Mm, yeah, it's. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it does definitely have a different texture. It's not just because it, it's mm. from yesterday. Um, so yeah, I, do, no, I do think it's quite bready. It's less. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's good there. I'm mm. enjoying it. It's nice. Mm. I think for me, I want something slightly more classic oh yeah but i think it's because it's nostalgic and i grew up eating them so i would very happily eat that but it would probably not the one i would go back and buy but that's only because if i'm going to buy hot response i'm buying because i want some sense of nostalgia um, i might buy this one first just because chocolate and... yes of course <laughs> i don't know but i kind of like chocolate <laughs> yeah, didn't <you>? shocker <laughs> um yeah i really enjoy this one it's a lot better than i expected i wasn't i i don't i like that they've twisted it enough mm -hmm. 
versus just adding i don't think i'd enjoy just chocolate chips added to no. one of these other ones particularly i you know they've thought about how it, to put but... chocolate into it and they've changed the flavor profile to match it yes like for sure. switching up the spices for cardamom yeah. ginger which pair much better than yeah all spice i think with chocolate yeah all spice mixed spice definitely gives you kind of more old-fashioned mm. medieval dried fruits <laughs> but i like that and so. they're also more bitter spicing as well so yeah adding chocolate to that can make the whole thing just a bit earthy, I think. Um, and going back to the one from Poppins, because I really like it. Mm. Yeah, I, I actually really like them all. Mm -hmm. I like them all for different reasons. Like, um, Yeah, they all give a different reason mm. for buying them. Yeah. I think the topless one is probably the most kind of overall, and then it's lemony, so I was going to say it's the most kind of overall, like like a traditional chocolate bun but it's lemony so it's not i think um, the one from um quality shop house that probably is that was quite classic the one from um bread ahead was quite classic although missing the spicing a little bit mm. i think flavor wise most classic is poppins yeah that's interesting, but the dough it? is very no, untraditional um i think bread ahead had the most like dough the chewiness that i yeah. expect i would say the gale's texture is quite classic but the flavor's not quite there for me no um, i didn't enjoy the cranberries in it either Cranberries are difficult because they don't have the same like depth of flavor as they're yes. dried. They kind of have like a slight generic sweetness. Yes, and then with the dough being sweet as well, yeah. that was that was not the one for me. Yeah, and... yeah. If you like multi flavors, I would say go for the one from Floor because it has that really nice warm maltiness. Yes. That was it's much more like toasted tea cake kind of malt loaf. It's saurine. Saurine, yeah. It's giving that very. Mm. It's like if saurine wasn't like three thousand times denser. <laughs> And it's like very light, mm. but it gives you that same kind of warm multi flavor. Mm -hmm. I think that would be delicious, quite aggressively toasted, because I do quite like toasting, quite aggressively toasted with lots of butter. Mm. Um, this one, I think, also, if you're one of those people that like, I love a hot cross bun as a bacon sandwich, that I oh, think that would stand would up so really good. nicely with. I don't like um, bacon, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not a brown sauce person, but that kind of tangy flavor mm. i think would also go really well with that yeah the spicing in this would really yeah. lend well to savory and the sourdough yeah, uh, yeah i yeah. think that's what would make it a good sandwich as well the fact that you can taste the sourdoughness of it um i that was only one pound 80 which i was surprised i think that's a really floor good price. i generally find quite pricey mm -hmm. um and you know relative to other mm -hmm. london bakeries like the mince pie is one of the more expensive ones yeah it's very good um but I also yeah, expect well, a lot from Floor mm -hmm. because I like what they do a lot and I like their approach to things. So I, I have always some mm -hmm. high expectations. Except giving credit to the chefs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think they've, they've come back from that. Yes. Um, mm. Well, that was delicious. Mm -hmm. um, if you did try one of these or one that we missed, then feel free to let us know. Mm. Even though it would be too late for this year, we'd love to know. And if you'd like... Um, me to do more of these reviews then also let me know um there's a lot of delicious things in london that it'd be fun to compare and i've Definitely. got if ed won't come back i've got other <laughs> friends um, i could just do it on my own that was fine too um but it was definitely nice to share this because i yeah. always want to try them at the same time but i just it just feels just too wasteful yeah, to yeah, do it on my own seven hot cross buns mm, yeah felicity and i did similar buns earlier in the year but then didn't didn't recorded or didn't do anything <laughs> with it and uh, so i took notes but um, fun. that was prior to the podcast launching yeah. so um yeah happy to do these again um how would you make your hot cross bun so mine are pretty classic they're a yeasted dough um with eggs and butter um not super enriched it's not to the level of brioche style um has a chew and I go pretty classic. I lean heavily on mixed spice because I think it, to most people, it gives that classic flavor. Um, and then I, yeah, go heavy on inclusion. So lots and lots of dried fruit. And I kind of flip between using no peel and using peel kind of also depends on who I'm making them for. Mm -hmm. um, but over the years, I've done lots and lots of different ones. I just did some that had um, crisp bacon and dried fig. Mm -hmm. uh, Bacon, and bacon, date and bacon, one of them. <laughs> and they were delicious. They had the classic flavor and texture, but then they also had the bacon and they kind of 
gave you that slight like um fig roll slight vibes did you consider using any bacon fat like subbed out for some so bacon? there was no bacon fat subbed out but i once cooked off the bacon everything went into the mix so there is some bacon fat in there mm. um i've done them with chocolate i've done them with uh and whipped maple butter as mm. a serving which was delicious mm. um but the ones i make for me not for work not for writing generally a pretty classic because it gives me the comfort and the nostalgia that I want the same with like a Christmas cake I find it really hard to write a recipe on Christmas cake because I'm like I make the same one every year because <laughs> it's what I like so I love that you bake the same things over and over like, rarely but there's yeah. a few like seasonal things given how much time you have to yeah. spend baking to new things like to rebake things it's quite a commitment to yeah. baking but it's also yeah for me it's those things for occasion so Christmas cake, mince pies, like there are certain like almost like family things that we make all the time. Mm. Whereas day to day, yeah, there are some things I remake, but there's less of those on a regular basis. I'm normally just like trying something new, but yeah, classic is the way to go for me for hot cross buns. And do you soak the dried fruit first? Depends on where I've got them from. Uh -huh. um, some producers at the supermarket level are incredibly dry mm. and will be just bad if you don't soak them there are a couple of producers that make nice plump moist and don't need it and um, so it really just depends on what's available and um, but it's always a good idea if you're not sure if you're not you know the most um confident with baking and you, you don't know if they feel plump enough then soak them in hot water soak them in some hot water and rum some tea mm. whatever you want really um, you went rum. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. It doesn't mm -hmm. need very long either. Some places soak them overnight, mm -hmm. um, but like generally I find, yeah, you won't need that long, 10, 20 minutes with a hot liquid is fine. Um, you just want them to lose that real intense dryness. Um, also because they tend to burn if they're on the, if they're on the outside of the bun okay. and they're very dry, they will become burnt and bitter. Whereas if you soak them, that moisture helps uh, protect them from burning. That makes sense. Yeah. Good tip, everybody. Um, amazing. That's been really interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much My for pleasure. sharing in the breaking of bread. Many breads. Yep. Many breads at Easter. Um, do you have plans for Easter? Uh, we're going to take the dog to the beach uh, for a day nice. and then we're going to go, we're going to see my brother and just take the dog for walks. <laughs> Are you making, then, making anything? No, we're making pizza. <laughs> Are you making the dough? That still counts. Yes. We um, Easter is one of those things where I know there are traditional things to eat, but I just wasn't mm. in the mood for Chocolate it. Eggs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll make those, but um, you know, like the savory side mm. of it. Like, I'm not. I I love lamb, but I very rarely cook it at home, mm. so it's just something I'm not that fussed about. And um, we both have very busy lives, so sometimes like something easy, I can make a pizza dough in the evening and use it the day after, and it's nice and low key. So. We may do that. We'll see. I haven't stopped dating, so now I've finished. Yeah, your my pile end. of scraps have gone. Yeah, my pile of scraps have <laughs> gone. I was just wanting to review. It was interesting trying them again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah they're all so different, but it's like so similar, and yet they've all got unique bits yeah, about definitely. them. They, um, More different than I was expecting, to be honest. Yeah, same. Yeah, I was surprised to be able to like actually have something to talk about. <laughs> I was a bit like, hmm, hot cross buns are often much of a muchness, but mm, yeah, the lemon and the mm. the butteriness and the maltiness and the chewiness. So definitely, they all had something that was um that was in their favor or Definitely. at least distinguishable yeah um cool well thank you for joining us and i uh, yeah, can't wait to talk to you again next week by the time this comes out you will have already had easter so i hope you had a good one <laughs> and um yeah maybe you'll be able to find one of these ones if not I'm sure there'll be more exciting bakes in our futures yeah all right thanks guys thanks very much bye